因为有两有英语也有国语，所以呢，呃，我们一起念，呃，同时念。We're going to read Psalm 103, and we're going to use the language that you are comfortable with. And because we are very few of us attending, so we're going to invite you to come and sing along with us while we are singing Psalm 103. But we read first. So, uh, let's uh, take your own language <laughs> and read. Well, this is now.
we look forward to his second coming when we do our Advent celebration. And tonight, on Christmas Eve, we light the center candle, as we've been lighting a candle every week until tonight. And so I will read the first couple passages, and then we'll read the last passage, which is from Revelation, uh, together. Galatians 4, 4 through 5. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Isaiah 9-2 The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. Isaiah 9, 6-7a For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. In our last passage of Revelation, let's all read together, whether in English or in Chinese. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. A lot of people 
that are just lonely with nobody to spend the holidays with. Just this week, uh, 15 miles from my house, there was a, a terrible car accident. Two people killed three days before Christmas. Learn how many lives that impacted for Christmas. And then many of us are, are working till the very moment of Christmas Eve. Last night I spent two hours driving around from Dixon to Davis to Sacramento to Woodland, frustrated as we prepared for this evening. Finally, I ended up back in Dixon. I thought about this passage that we read at Isaiah 9 I began to think about all of the darkness that is in the world today. From the time of Genesis chapter 3, there has been darkness over mankind. And from generation to generation, we have tried to find some kind of hope. In search of some kind of light. Mankind has tried to fill that void with false gods. False teachings. The passage in Isaiah was taken from a very dark time in the nation of Israel. Talking about in Isaiah chapter 8 of darkness and despair. Finally, we get to this passage Isaiah 9 2. People walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's an amazing passage. We see that hope and light is now prophesied. A people that have experienced no light. That had no hope. A great light was now going to be revealed to them. As I prepared for this evening, two hours before I came, I pulled up this article. And see, I was always discouraged about a one day celebration. Because such a great miracle of what we celebrate tonight is something that impacts us for a lifetime. And then I read about these Iraqi Christians going back home. 300 of them bust in. Their community destroyed their church in shambles. And as we worship tonight, I wondered what were they singing as they walked into their church. Oh, such a glorious miracle of today certainly impacts us for a lifetime. Speaking of the Iraqi town of Bartella. This is what they 
said, on one street wall, Isis's black banner remains visible under the white paint. Next to it, someone wrote, Christ is the light of the world. Bartella is Christian. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as I read that and sat here this evening, a lot of everything impacted me. Imagine the one who spoke all things into existence. We will walk out tonight, we'll walk out these doors and look up and see the stars and the moon shining brightly. And realize that the same God now has revealed as it enlightened humanity. He has given us hope and a light. God has always been the light. From the time of Genesis 1, he was light. First John chapter 1, verse 5. He says, This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Jesus himself said in John 8, 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. God is giving us an eternal perspective. To be able to look beyond the circumstances of this life and see something glorious. Just as we can envision God's light. We read about it in Revelation that His holiness will be our light. It's not the kind of pure light that we can experience now. Such hope that we have. Just as these Iraqi Christians looked beyond the circumstance of a decimated community and church. They marched forward after two and a half years. There was no heating in their church. The only light they had were the ones that the women were carrying on candles. But as you envision this, you can experience the light of God dwelling within them. Hopefully we can experience the enlightenment that God has revealed through the birth of His Son. The virgin birth prophesied in Isaiah 9, 14, along with this passage that we just read in chapter 9, reveals the light for humanity. The birth of Jesus is a new beginning for mankind. We wrap our arms around it and we embrace it. 
Some of us tonight may be looking for a new beginning. Now is the time. God has revealed himself through Jesus. What we do with this miraculous event of the Savior's birth together with the crucifixion and resurrection will determine our eternal destination. God has divinely designed a process of reconciliation. Imagine the love that God has for his creation. To leave everything that he has, his majesty and splendor, to walk among the darkness. To experience everything that we experience. The humble birth. Imagine the birthing centers that we have now in America. We have a private room. <laughs> Soft music. <laughs> a shower. <laughs> Everything to make it comfortable. <laughs> we praise God for that. But he also came down in a very difficult time. The Roman Empire in charge. So Jesus also knew the darkness of the world of war. He experienced death of friends, loved ones. He saw disease of the world. He healed some and others he didn't. He also felt the anxiety of having to experience the brutality of the cross. Sweat droplets of blood as he prepared for the crucifixion. And he is also the Prince of Peace. So we see that even though Jesus was preparing to suffer, there was a peace within him. He knew that he was going back to be with the Father. He looked beyond the circumstances and the horror of what he would experience. Perfect peace. We talk so much about peace during this time of year. Peace that passes all understanding. A peace that the world cannot give. A peace that the world cannot understand. Beautiful light. <coughs> no more condemnation. No more darkness. We're free to walk in the light. Does this not extend beyond December 25th? We are now the light that God uses. Perfect peace within us. To reveal this peace and this light to our people around us. Singing hallelujah as we walk into a church that has no healing. 
，那就是他们走到一个没有暖气的教堂当中，他们是唱着哈利路亚的。Praising the God that has enlightened us to who He is。来歌颂一个向我们彰显、启示他自己是谁的永生的神。All the pain and the turmoil of who God is. That we can远远地瞥到一眼，神是怎样一位神。We can do nothing more and nothing less than weep in thankfulness. 那我们真的是没有办法忍住，可以就充满感恩的来向他谢，向他感谢，热泪向他感谢。Christmas gives us the opportunity for new life in the light. We can soon find the darkness of the world. We won't be in the darkness of the world anymore. It gives us hope. 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 It gives Revelation 22. <laughs> gives us joy. For those of you that know me, that's pretty difficult for me. Joy. <laughs> but it's a joy of being spiritually healed and experiencing intimacy with the true God. Each day. So overwhelmed with the opportunity and the hope of being able to experience God's presence daily. To pray, to talk to the Lord each day as I'm driving around at work and I'm frustrated and consumed by the darkness of this world. But we have seen a great light. Once again, it gives us peace. That transcends all understanding. And when the world cannot give, because it is peace with God. Peace that is provided by the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Who is the Prince of Peace forever and ever? I want to close with, a, for, with Romans chapter 15, verses, verse 13. And this is our prayer to all of you. And I would like to break tradition after this, if I may. I would like us all to sing once again what the adult Mandarin sang, Psalm 103. And I know that the Spirit will touch each and every one of us once again. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maybe somebody can leave us. Uh,
Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. 